I was recently speaking with a large group of neurosurgeons at a European Neurosurgical Society meeting, and one of the surgeons stood up, and, and, and I feared that he was going to chastise me, uh, as is often done by uh, surgeons or others who are uh, being faced with new technology that they didn't learn at their alma mater. But instead, this neurosurgeon yelled, genius, why didn't we think of this before? Uh, and it's not genius, it's simple. And maybe, maybe it's so simple it makes it genius. It reminds me of the light bulb. The light bulb is the most simple thing, and yet it works. So too does the disc cell procedure work. And they asked me how I came up with the idea. Well, let me go back in time. My, my background's just a little bit different. Um, it, it was a wonderful background, but it was a hard background, a hard life. Uh, I, I grew up on a farm in Pennsylvania. I loved it, and I just worked uh, seven days a week. Um, but one of my tasks was welding. And, uh, and as a child, I had to weld. And I knew enough when I welded that I, I didn't weld the, the hinge of a gate because it would break there. Uh, welding the hinge of the gate would be like welding the fulcrum of a lever arm and it would fatigue over time there. And so then fast forward, I, I was taken out of the farm by the state through a program they had. Um, and when I was 15 years old, I found myself working in the division of neurosurgery at Penn State University. And and I saw the surgeons uh, from great centers around the world. Uh, my two immediate mentors were from Harvard and Yale. Lovely mentors, but they were routinely implanting uh, steel rods in spines. And, and, and they were moving disc bulges with scalpels and then later with uh, lasers. Uh, and, and, and it didn't make sense to me. Even as a 15-year-old child, I recognized that what they were doing was illogical. Uh, because I recognized uh, that when they put those rods in the spines, even if it was a minimally invasive fusion uh, through the skin, uh, that means that those Forces weren't, of the spine weren't going to magically disappear, but they'd have to go elsewhere. They'd have to go above and below that fusion. And sure enough, they did. The research from around the world affirmed what a 15-year-old child thought would happen. Um, indeed, those fusions caused accelerated degeneration of the adjacent discs and the facet joints. And then when they did discectomies, they weakened the disc wall. And I knew the disc needed the wall that it was built with. Uh, the spine was created naturally. It's man that ruined it uh, through surgery. Uh, but the disc needs those uh, 17 layers. It needs that wall for support. And the surgeons were removing it. And the research from around the world affirmed what a 15-year-old boy thought that that would lead towards same segment degeneration of a disc that's operated on for discectomy. And so there you have it, the fusion, the most commonly done procedure uh, using metal rods uh, caused adjacent segment breakdown, the discectomy, same segment breakdown. So from an early age, I recognized that uh, uh, things weren't right. I couldn't say anything. I was only 15 and uh, my colleagues were, uh, you know, decades beyond my age. Uh, but then I, I left Penn State and I went to the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia. Um, and although Penn State was great to me, the University of Pennsylvania was fabulous. They let me do what I wanted to do. And the only thing I wanted to do was something that was very intellectually challenging, something that nobody else wanted to do. And that was to help patients that nobody else could help. Patients that had undergone prior spine surgeries and they were no better or worse. Uh, they underwent epidural injections, facet joint injections, rhizotomies, neurotomies, spinal cord stimulator implants, the mill, the spine mill that everybody knows. And anyway, these patients came to me and their surgeries were often perfect, technically perfect, yet the patients were no better. Their pain was the same as it was before, or even worse. And I recognized the patients weren't faking pain. They weren't feigning an illness or exaggerating symptomology. Nobody wants to go to a doctor, especially not at a university. Uh, but uh, and just because of the logistics of being in Philadelphia, it's a great university. But anyway, it was clear to me that because the surgeries were correct and the spines looked okay on MRI, uh, and this all came in at the same time. I was working there when the research came in from New England Journal of Medicine showing that the MRI doesn't correlate with, uh, with pathology, with uh, symptoms. 
and that's the New England Journal of Medicine, uh, July 1994. It's the study that won the outstanding study. Uh, but anyway, the Stanford uh, study also came in to show that that gel caused inflammations. So it occurred to me that these patients weren't getting better. And the only plausible explanation to me was that the whole paradigm was flawed. And that's a big statement to make because the spine industry is the largest medical industry in the world. Uh, there's more spent on spine than there is on treating cancer. Uh, and again, I was a very young person uh, making that claim. Uh, but it was true. And, uh, and I think the biggest irony in my career was that all of my patients came from one center, and it was a top center, so this is not to belittle the center, but it was a spine center called the Rothman Institute in Philadelphia. And the patients came from the Rothman Institute, uh, and, and uh, their surgeries were perfect. Indeed, they were technically perfect, uh, but all of the patients had pain. They had the same pain or different worse pain. Uh, and then I knew the, the, and the reason I say that it was uh, uh, one of the greatest ironies of my career is that if you talk to any of your spine surgeons, and I challenge you to do this, ask your spine surgeon what textbook they studied from, and they would say, the Rothman textbook, of course, Rothman and Simeon textbook. Uh, it's, it's, it's a fabulous spine surgery textbook uh, for those times when surgery is necessary. Um, and so that's why I thought this paradigm is wrong. The surgeries are, doing, uh, are, are not doing what needs to be done. It's biologic. It's biologic. And we could talk about biologic on, uh, on chapter two. <laughs>